So last time we did a Gcam roundup on the most popular Android phones and the conclusion was Gcam is worth installing up to some extent. But it's 2021 and you have budget phones with 48 megapixel cameras like Micromax in Note 1 and Redmi Note 9 Pro. Some even have 64 megapixel cameras like Realme 7 and Samsung F41. And the camera software is also equally good. So the question that has to be asked is, is it worth installing Gcam on your Android device or should you even consider Gcam while buying an Android phone? Well. Well, this is Pratik from TechVisor.com and we tried Gcam on some of the most popular budget phones of 2020 like Redmi Note 9 Pro, Samsung F41, Realme 7, OnePlus Nord, Micromax in Note 1. And, 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 before we get to that, we upload tech videos twice a week and if you want to stay wiser, make sure you subscribe to TechVisor and hit the bell icon as well. Let's go. Now, in case you're not aware about Gcam, well, Pixel phones are very popular due to their camera and the main reason is the Google Camera app that comes pre-installed in Google Pixel phones. This Google Camera or Gcam depends a lot less on hardware and does most of the magic on the camera software, unlike other manufacturers here. But unfortunately, Google doesn't release Gcam for other Android phones as it is built only exclusive for the Pixel. And that's where Gcam mods come in. Various independent developers extract the same Google camera app from the Pixel phones and sideload it to work with absolutely any Android phone in the market. The camera app is known as Gcam. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the phones. And this time to keep things interesting, we did a poll on Instagram and combined we had over 16,000 votes on them. Thank you everyone for participating. If you aren't following still, well, instagram.com slash techwiser. Let's start with the first phone. So now let's get to the first picture. This is the Redmi Note 9 Pro. The first picture is taken on the Redmi Note 9 Pro MIUI camera and the second one is taken on Gcam. This was a very close fight. It's approximately 51% votes to 49% vote. So the first picture taken on MIUI camera is bright. It makes you look a bit bright with a warm background. It's a happy tone and overall happy vibe. And that's the reason most people choose it. It makes you look good. If you look on the other hand, Gcam does bring out a lot more dynamic range and makes you look normal. But not many will prefer this picture. They want to look the best in the photo. Here are some more examples where the Redmi camera makes you look bright and Gcam gives you a more realistic image. Imperfect picture as I would like to say. And Gcam totally works fine on Redmi Note 9 Pro. Smooth AF. Let's move on to the next photo, which was taken from the OnePlus Nord. The top photo is from Gcam and the bottom one is from an Oxygen OS camera. Now this, like the first image, was a close tie. The Oxygen OS image won 51% to 49% and I personally was shocked. Like this image has more detail, it looks more dramatic and this is the case with every OnePlus picture. The OnePlus image looks more dramatic right out of the camera with very high dynamic range. The Gcam works perfectly on OnePlus Nord, but the Nord pictures look more dramatic, overprocessed, sharper, straight out of the camera. I had to bring out a Gcam photo and edit it in Lightroom to be like this, whereas the OnePlus camera gives that edited photo straight out of the camera. If you are an enthusiast like me, you wouldn't love an overprocessed sharp photo, but most people, they would. They don't edit their photo and post it straight to Instagram. In that case, the OnePlus photo looks dramatic and pleasing to the eye. The next picture is from the Samsung Galaxy F41. Now, surprisingly, the first picture is from Samsung camera and the second picture is from Gcam. And definitely it's a no-brainer that the first picture is better.
Here are more examples from the Samsung Galaxy F41. Have a look. Samsung camera definitely has better dynamic range and it comes out on top. You can see details in the shadow and even the details in the highlights. Like here, you can see the wall, tree and even the sky. But why? Isn't Gcam supposed to be the one with better dynamic range? Well, Samsung F41 runs on an Exynos chip and Camera 2 API has limited support. So basically, Gcam doesn't work properly on the Samsung phone. It cannot access the entire camera hardware. So the night mode doesn't work, the portrait mode doesn't work. There are a lot of things in Gcam that don't work. Moving on, the final image was from Realme 7. And this image again was a no-brainer. The first picture was from Gcam and the second one was from Realme 7. The Gcam image won straight by 85% to 15% and this is the only place where Gcam has a clear victory. It consistently gives you real looking selfies with all the imperfections, pimple, blemishes, everything. Although one thing to keep in mind is people picked up the Gcam one because they are aware about it. But here, look how Gcam functions on the Realme 7. I mean, if you are in a hurry, which mostly we are, it's important to click something in the moment rather than nothing. You can't ask someone to stand in front of you and wait for Gcam to process an image like this. It's awful. Now, I've tried multiple ports of Gcam and all the config files. This was the only port which clicked good pictures and the reason for the gcam lag is the mediatek processor in realme 7. realme 7 runs on mediatek and the processor is not meant for gcam here's one more example which i almost forgot the micromax in note 1 how can i forget this phone <laughs> gcam doesn't work on this but you can use gcam go both gcam go and micromax pictures look almost the same identical if you would you can't distinguish between them but gcam go is much faster than the stock micromax camera and it also gives you portrait mode so use gcam go on micromax now what's the point of all of this this word pictures all of it well there are three takeaways from this first gcam doesn't work well on all the budget phones especially Exynos processor like Samsung M31 or F41, the MediaTek processors with the Realme 7 and Micromax in Note 1 and other less popular phones. Second, even if it works on non-supported ones, it's barely usable. Like on Samsung F41, all the modes didn't work and on Realme 7, it's too laggy to use daily. Third, it works on the Snapdragon processor but people usually prefer a good looking version of the image. A brighter, good looking photo where you look good, sharp. Gcam gives you realistic image, which I can see not many people will pick. So is Gcam worth considering while buying a phone? Hmm, well, as much as the enthusiast inside me wants to say yes, the answer is plain no. You shouldn't consider Gcam as the reason to buy a phone. Buy it on its specs. If Gcam works, well, good for you, sir. If it doesn't, don't bother installing it. And on that note, this is Badik signing off. Let me know your thoughts on Gcam in the comments below. I would love to know about it. And I'll see you in the next one.